I'm going to show you how I make Texas chili. After some research and trial and error, I'm pretty sure this is how they made it when chili was first eaten on the cattle trails in Texas. Some people might call this Colorado chili because it uses red chilies like Colorado chili does. But this Texas chili is more than that. And Colorado chili, by the way, uh, isn't a reference to the state. It's a reference to uh, the Spanish word for red. Uh, this is not that. I'll show you why. These are uh, guajillo and ancho. A uh, whole pack of each. Fills up about this much of the, the blender. This is a Nutribullet. Uh, just pop them open, pull the seeds out, take, t take the stems off, and then uh, cut up a couple cloves of garlic and uh, get some fresh thyme in there. Smoked paprika, oregano. Fresh oregano is better, but they didn't have it. Uh, some olive oil and some uh, chipotle and adobo sauce, chipotle peppers, and blend it up. The garlic and uh, dried peppers, all, all ingredients go into the blender, and about three quarters of a box of uh, beef stock. Uh, what is that? 32 ounces three quarters of a 32 ounce box and then a quarter of it goes in the pot I prefer a cast iron pot and a quarter of the stock goes in the bottom with the beef the beef is just a, a big roast that's uh, cut up and seared in a cast iron pan for 30 seconds and uh, with a little bit of pepper and uh, then we just mix the chili uh, sauce into the into the beef and throw it in the oven no beans no beans it's been in uh, the oven for about two hours now so to after I put the chili sauce and the beef in the pot I, uh, I cut up some red peppers typically I like to saute the the peppers with the meat but you can do it either way so it's in the oven at 250 uh, for six or eight hours since we uh, browned the or blackened the meat really since we cooked the meat chunks before we put it in the chili uh, they're gonna hold together pretty well otherwise they'll fall apart if you don't uh, saute the meat or uh, not brown the meat but actually blacken it like uh, get that pan get an iron skillet as hot as you can get it and it's gonna be smoking don't put any oil in it yet put the oil on the on the meat itself along with some seasonings and toss the meat in and in the red peppers let it uh, let it blacken uh, should only take 30 seconds to a minute and uh, put a nice crust on the meat so it'll hold together in the chili uh, and then we put it in the oven f at 250 for six or eight hours and uh, stir it up every hour or two and right now it doesn't look that thick um, but it'll it'll definitely thicken up as it cooks and especially after it's done but it, I mean it's plenty thick really but It'll get thicker. And that's it. Here's the finished product. I'll put a couple bowls in the fridge and freeze the rest of it in individual containers. Easy meal. It's quick. And uh, this is the best chili I've ever eaten. Uh, feel free to experiment with my recipe and uh, perfect it for you. But the important things are that you use uh, dried chilies and uh, you can put them directly in the blender as I showed or you can put them in a pot a sauce pot with some broth and and uh, uh, soften them up before you put them in the blender I, I've seen people do that I don't bother with it I don't see I don't see that it makes a difference in the taste also be sure that you sear your meat before you put it in the chili or it'll just fall apart it's roast 
Uh, so get a nice sear on that meat, and it's a good opportunity to put some pepper and uh, garlic and uh, some red and green bell peppers in there in the pan and uh, saute it all together. But uh, don't leave it in there too long. You want it raw in the center. As a matter of fact, it's okay if that roast is cold. It's actually better because uh, then you're just going to sear the outside and not overcook the inside. So uh, those are the important things. Uh, dried chilies and use a roast, not hamburger. And for God's sake, don't put beans in your Texas chili. All right, enjoy. Enjoy.